Hello friends, my name is Pramod Bisal and uh, today I am going to start the lectures on solid mechanics and uh, uh, as uh, the, sub uh, the name of the subject itself says solid mechanics which means the mechanics which is related to solid parts only. Uh, similarly, we uh, also read fluid mechanics that is related to fluid parts and this is related to solid parts. The subject is also known as SOM the strength of material or the material strength the reverse and the mechanics of material also mechanics of material now this is a basically application based subject and the concept of this subject are going to be used in uh, theory of machines and machine design also both uh, there we are going widely going to use the concept of solid mechanics now what exactly solid mechanics consists of so uh, you must already be knowing that mechanics is a study of motion and the forces that are causing that particular motion and this can be subdivided into statics and uh, dynamics so aesthetics when the object is at rest there is no motion and dynamics when the object is in motion so the object is moving basically and when in dynamics also we can subdivide it into two parts one is kinematics and another is Kinetics. Kinematics, we do not consider the cause of motion. So we only study the motion that can be displacement, it can be velocity, it can be acceleration, but we do not consider the forces there. So without considering the cause, there is no consideration to the forces here. But when we talk about kinetics, we will consider the forces here. So these two topics are basically going to be useful in theory of machine only. So these are topics regarding theory of machine. In solid mechanics, we will mainly deal with statics when the motion uh, is not there when the object is at rest. So uh, the solid mechanics concept, as I already told you, are related with engineering mechanics. So I hope you all must have already studied engineering mechanics or at least have seen the videos on this channel or at some other place also. The engineering mechanics concept must be clear before entering into solid mechanics. So what concepts were there in engineering mechanics? Number one, there was static equilibrium. Static equilibrium equation. So as I have said already in solid mechanics, we are going to deal with the static part. So there is a static equilibrium equation. Then there is free body diagram. We need to make a free body diagram of the particular object that are given to us then there will be resolution of forces you must know how to calculate the forces in particular direction if they are not given in that particular direction then uh, there is equivalent forces equivalent force uh, then uh, next one is support reactions support reactions so we will talk about various types of support here and what reactions uh, will come in each of these cases. Then there is centroid and then the last topic is moment of inertia. So I am sure you must have already gone through these topics but just to brush up I am going to take one example and uh, just do it. So let's take the example of a beam. There is a horizontal beam here. Uh, one side is a roller support, another side is a pin support. This is uh, basically a B point. Then here there is a part of the beam that is extruded and at that particular point we have applied another step. This is at angle theta. So this is point C, this is point D, there is an angle theta and uh, this distance is total length of beam is L, this length is A and this length is D. Now this is a basic example and these type of examples are uh, going to be widely used in solid mechanics. Now, if in order to solve this question, now what is the question? You need to calculate the reactions here. You need to calculate the reaction at these supports. So in order to do that, first of all, we need to understand free body diagram and support reactions. 
So how do we do support reactions? To do support reactions, we already know in solid mechanics there can be a support of roller type or there can be a support of pin type. Only a pin. Uh, when we are writing support reactions, in order to write the reactions, the reaction will come in that direction only where the motion is restricted, restricted by uh, some method. So uh, the possible motions in two dimension will be horizontal rectilinear motion, it can move in this direction, vertical rectilinear motion, movement in upward direction and a movement. This could be clockwise, this could be anticlockwise also. Now, these are the possible uh, motions that can be there in a two dimensional system. Now we will analyze these two things here, roller and pin. So roller and pin. In case of roller, now see, roller, this can move in this particular direction, right? So there won't be any restriction of this movement and there won't be any reaction in horizontal direction for a roller, right? But this cannot move in vertical direction, so there is going to be a reaction for vertical direction. Similarly, there is a freedom for movement, the clockwise or anticlockwise movement here, so there won't be any reaction in a movement direction also. When we talk about the pin joint, for pin joint, it cannot move in this direction, horizontal movement cannot be there, so there is going to be a horizontal reaction. It cannot move in vertical direction, there is going to be a vertical reaction, but it is free to rotate about this point, so there is not going to be any movement reaction. So that is the basic concept behind the reactions of a pin joint and roller joint. So let's take this example and put these reactions here. This is our point A. There is going to be one, uh, only one reaction here. So let's say R1. This is our point B. There are going to be two reactions here. So one is R2, another is R3. Uh, regarding the direction, we can uh, take either direction. We can take in this direction also. In this direction also, the calculations will automatically give us the final direction. They will uh, show the sign and the final direction. Now, we have calculated. Uh, uh, solve the support reactions here and we are making a free body diagram. Free body diagram is we are uh, putting all the forces that are there. There is, is not going to be any support, only the forces will be there. So free body diagram of this particular B. Now next one is uh, resolution of forces. What about resolution of forces whenever there is a force which is at an angle with the required direction then we resolve it into that particular direction. So if this is F, this is let's say X, and this is seven, this value is going to be Fx. Now how much Fx will be? We can calculate using simple trigonometry. If this length is F, then this length will be Fx is equal to F cos theta. I hope there is no doubt about that. Similarly, this length Fy Fy is going to be F of cos now how much is the angle here? 90 minus theta so cos 90 minus theta which is also F sin theta these are the two, react, uh, two components of that particular force so I will put these components here and it will be something like this one is going to be f cos theta, another is going to be f sin theta. Simple enough to here. Now we have resolved the forces. We need to calculate equivalent force. When do we calculate equivalent force? Uh, there are certain conditions when we will need to transfer the force from one point to another point. We will change the point of action of the particular force. So how do we do that? In this particular example only. If this is our part C D and there is a force acting here, let's say F is the force that acts here, then how do we bring this force to this point and what is going to be the effect of it? So what we do, we add two dummy forces, equal forces but in opposite direction so that the net effect of them is zero. So F here and F here, net effect is zero. If this distance is D, 
Well, this is forming a couple now. And you can see the direction of couple will be clockwise. Okay. So this situation is equivalent to saying that this is point C, this is point B. There is a force F here along with the couple of F into B. Simple. Now we do this that for here. So we can say that F sin theta is going to be there, but F cos theta can be replaced with F cos theta here along with the moment in clockwise direction F cos theta into D since the distance is D. So that is how we calculate the equivalent force. Uh, now we come to the final part where we are going to evaluate those reactions when we are going to calculate those reactions. So that is static equilibrium equation. The static equilibrium equation basically means the net force <coughs> is zero and net moment is also zero. When we are doing the calculations in three dimension, there can be three parts here. Sigma fx is equal to zero, sigma fy is equal to zero, sigma fz equal to zero. Similarly, there will be three parts for moment also. Sigma mxy is equal to zero, sigma myz is equal to zero, sigma mxz is equal to zero. But uh, when we move to two dimensions, so the z component will totally uh, get away. So we'll remove z component. So there won't be any xz part, there won't be any yz part, and there won't be any fz part. So we will remain with three equations only in two dimensions. We write all these three equations for this part also and we are done. Uh, sigma mxy is also equivalent to sigma mz is equal to 0. How can we say that uh, when we are seeing xy, it is a plane, xy plane. But when we are putting single uh, word, uh, single letter here, this will mean the axis of that particular moment. So that will be z. Okay. So sigma mz equal to 0. Now let's write those equations here and uh, we'll see how it goes. First will be sigma fx is equal to 0. Now for doing sigma fx is equal to 0, all forces in this direction, the summation will be 0. So f cos theta, first force, second force, r3 is equal to 0. Then sigma f y is equal to so we have uh, written sigma fx equal to 0 as f cos theta plus r3 is equal to 0 and sigma f equal to 0 as f sin theta this force plus this force r2 plus this force is also there r1 is equal to 0. This is our equation number 1, this is our equation number 2. Third equation we will write from sigma m is equal to 0. Now this moment we can calculate about any point on this beam. Any point will mean point A point C or point B. We can uh, write moment about any of these points. We can write moment about sigma m a is equal to 0. We can write sigma m b is equal to 0. We can write sigma m c is equal to 0. Now how to decide which of them to choose? So the very general consideration is wherever there is more number of unknown reactions at, at whatever point the number of unknown reactions is more we are going to calculate the moment about that point so that those reactions can be eliminated from the equation. So say if you uh, calculate MA, when you are calculating MA, R2 is going to be there only, only R2 is going to be there. So in case of MA, it will be equation in terms of R2 only. Okay. If you write about point B, MB, in terms of MB, no R2, no R3, only R1 will be there. So in terms of this, uh, the equation will be in terms of R1 only. And if you write the moment of equation about point C, then about point C, it will be having R1 as well as R2 as well as R3. So that is of no use. So we are definitely not going to use MC here. Regarding MA and MP, one can give you R2, one can give you R1. You can write these two equations and calculate the values. Or you can write one equation and use this equation uh, along with them. You will calculate the values also. Okay, so just for the example, we'll write uh, moment about point B. So let's see how it goes. Moment about point B will be first off because of R1. So this is the distance 
and this is a force. Distance direction, force direction. It is a clockwise moment. Okay. So R1 into L. It is a clockwise. So we will simply consider either clockwise as positive or anti-clockwise as positive. R1 into L. Let's take this as positive. This is R1 into L. Plus second moment is there going to be because of F sin theta. How much will that be? F sin theta into this distance. This distance is A. A. And the direction of this is going to be? This is the distance. And this is the direction of force. So again clockwise. So positive sign only. No requirement of sign convention here. F sin theta is written. There will be no uh, moment because of these forces. But there is one more point here. That is F cos theta into D. That moment is also acting. And again that is in uh, the same direction. So we will add that also here. F cos theta into D is equal to 0. Now we are having 3 equations. 3 and 1. We can easily calculate them. R3 we can get from here. <coughs> R1 we can get from here. And R2 either by solving this. Or we can write equation about MA also. We can calculate these values. Now that's all about the static equilibrium equation and uh, other general concepts of the uh, engineering mechanics that are going to be useful to solid mechanics. Uh, what remains here is centroid and moment of inertia. About centroid, uh, I hope you already know these two concepts because again these are very confusing and very important concepts. So centroid, uh, I will give you just the basics behind it. A x important moment of inertia or that of a rectangle and that of a uh, circle. For rectangle, if this distance is B and so this is T and this is B, this is basically bread, this is the thickness and this is x direction, this is y direction. So I xx, the moment about x axis is going to be B T Q by 12 I by 1 is going to be T B Q by 12 and I z that is the polar moment of inertia will be I x x plus I y. Okay. These are for the uh, rectangle. If it is square, B and T will be same. You can put the values there. In terms of a circle, this is x axis, this is y axis. So I x x is same as I y y and that is pi d q pi d 4 divided by 64. That is um, the moment of inertia. Plane, plane moment of inertia and if you calculate the polar moment of inertia that is z is equal to this plus this plus double of this pi d4 divided by 32. You simply have to remember these uh, three four values here and uh, you will be done with everything. So guys that is basic uh, basically the concept behind engineering mechanics uh, sorry the solid mechanics that uses engineering mechanics and I hope you get all these things. If not, you can watch the videos of engineering mechanics or you can comment below. I can make another video to uh, give you a detailed analysis of how to calculate these things and how to do uh, the particular problems of them. Thank you.